I recently released my own supplement protocol and in it, I received a lot of requests to do one for people that are, how do I say this delicately, more seasoned than I am. Like this comment. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, not that one. Damn spam comments. Here we go. Anyway, I'm gonna pretend like thousands of people asked me for this and I didn't just isolate a single comment to make it seem like there's a mass interest. I thought to myself, why not just rope my family in on this? So if you're an OG Physionic subscriber, you might remember this gentleman, Father Physionic, also known by his real name, Dean. Dean, or Papa as I call him, has his PhD in physics, and now that I have my PhD in molecular medicine, I'm his source for supplement advice, and he's my source for existential crises. So, what does he take, and why did I recommend these for him? So I have this mix of um, supplements that I make once every two weeks. I mix up a bunch of powders, and here I have, for uh, one day, I have two grams of glycine, two and a half grams of N-acetylcysteine, six grams of creatine, eight grams of collagen, and one gram of taurine. So I take that once a day, uh, presently before going to bed. And I also have these um, supplements in capsule and pill form. We'll discuss this first half of his stack before getting into the second half that he's about to get into. So first, I coerced him into taking Glynac, which is glycine and N-acetylcysteine, because there are a few extremely impressive randomized controlled trials that indicate that Glynac is extremely beneficial across a huge number of health metrics for those over the age of 60. I've covered these extensively in other content, including analyses of all the data and the mechanisms. I won't regurgitate things here. I am still slightly apprehensive about this one, considering that I'd like to see even more studies, but as it stands, the benefit lost is too great not to experiment on my father. I mean, ask him to consider the supplement in an ethical and loving manner. The next supplement in his powdered stack is one of my all-time favorites, creatine. Again, if you've been following my work for even a millisecond, you'll know that I've released extensive content on the various studies that firmly indicate widespread benefit of creatine from sleep deprivation, muscle performance, cognitive benefits, uh, muscle growth, and more. I was a little surprised that he was taking six grams, which I commented on. I'm curious why six grams of creatine. That is an odd number to choose. <laughs> I don't know, some influencer I listened to told me. I don't know if he said it in one of his videos or he did I not. texted him directly. <laughs> and he did not say six grams. <laughs> is that too much? It doesn't, six grams is fine. It's just uh, just the usual number is five grams that people take, or if you want to go up to- Five is an odd number though. So yeah. like six <laughs> seems much better to me. And because I'm getting kind of old, so like okay. an extra gram is probably doesn't hurt. <laughs> okay. Well, typically for the, the brain, they go up to 20 grams now, but uh, five grams has also been shown to be effective for other uh, organ systems just for the brain some studies use 20 grams but you don't have to go up to that high i'm just i was just curious about specifically six grams because i don't think i've ever said that in my life <laughs> six grams well, i didn't pull it out of the air i can tell you that <laughs> okay well you can look for the receipts then so as you heard five grams is the typical dose but some studies go up to 20 grams if you're focusing more on the cognitive benefits the next one was collagen. I've covered collagen up to now with a primary focus on skin, but there is some evidence on its impact for the joints. But when asking my dad why he takes it, I seem to have been wrong in my assumption that he'd choose to take collagen for the joints primarily. Collagen, we just went over. For you, you're taking it for joints, then you're taking it for skin, I guess is just kind of an additional kind of throwaway benefit that, that might be there. It's not working no, very actually, well. <laughs> actually, I was taking it to maintain my youthful appearance. And then for, I mean, if it helps my joints, that's good too. Because they're getting kind of sore. Okay. Okay. It's working great. <laughs> 
Okay, so I stand corrected. He's taking it for the skin too. That said, I have no idea where the eight grams came from. Not from me. The usual dose in trials is closer to 10 grams of collagen peptides. Then we turned our attention to taurine because there have been a few scary studies in relation to taurine that I've covered extensively. On a positive note, taurine has been linked to multiple trials and experimental studies to have significant benefit on a metabolic syndrome, as well as multiple areas of longevity. On the negative note, it's been tied to cancer, as well as been shown not to decline with age as once believed. I've covered both of these critiques and I'll address them here. I know people are going to ask about taurine because there's a few studies that just recently came out negatively against taurine. Um, but yeah, I saw your video on that. Yeah. Well, he's not dead yet, so. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. I mean, honestly, you're great. Uh, so that's all the proof you need. Um, <laughs> uh, and of one, as they say, but I mean, it's me, so that's all we need. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, the, the, the studies on taurine are, are perfectly fine still. There's a few studies that have been pushed back uh, for, for reasons that are, once you understand what the studies actually indicate, there's no indication to stop taurine consumption or anything like that. All the intervention trials that have done that have been done on taurine still th those didn't just suddenly poof disappear. Um, there's still plenty of studies that have looked at taurine and indicated benefit from from taurine. So yes, taurine has plenty of intervention data, meaning people are given taurine and tested before and after consumption and multiple trials indicate benefit. And as for the few studies showing negative effects, some don't actually address taurine directly and some change how we think about taurine, but they don't change my perspective on if it's beneficial. So at this point, I'm still a fan. My dad's dosing at one gram and plenty of intervention studies use more. Okay, that rounds out the powdered supplements. I guess I'll quick add that he also consumes one serving, about 25 grams of a protein powder because he doesn't consume much protein in the day. Now, before we get into the second half, I have an updated list of supplements that I've covered along with dosing and special circumstances to use them included in my Physionic Insiders membership. I have a specific sections for older individuals and why certain supplements aren't advised for younger individuals and more. Plus, let's not forget the live sessions with me, the private podcasts exclusive to the insiders, the varieties of protocols and guides and more, all included. And if you want to have an alternate ending to this video, I feel I'm like a Marvel's movie producer, you'll also get a fun story that my dad shares about me. You can join through the link in the description. Moving on to the capsule or pill supplements in the stack. So I've got this um, eye supplement. Um, I forget what it's called. Lutein. Zeaxanthin. Yeah, right. Both of those are in there. Probably some other things too. I have a multivitamin, one multivitamin. I have a glucosamine pill and fish oil and uh, that yellow stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Curcumin. Curcumin. Well, and and from turmeric. Turmeric, right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so starting with lutein and zeaxanthin, these two molecules are paired because they tend to localize in the retina of the eye and act as potent antioxidants. There have been many clinical trials indicating their benefit if consumed over the long term. I will link my analyses of all these studies in the description for you. The next one discussed is the multivitamin. Again, there's some very mild benefits for the brain according to some research that I've covered, but my impression of the data is that it's best to consume maybe half a normal dose of a multivitamin simply because your nutrition should cover most of the necessary micronutrients unless you ha are like on a heavily restricted diet. There's also some cautions against overconsumption of certain micronutrients like uh, folic acid and some fat soluble vitamins like versions of vitamin E. Let me repeat, overconsumption. 
Not that we don't need versions of these nutrients. We do in the right amounts. Now, a more interesting one is omega-3s. And here we have many studies that indicate that omega-3 fats are heart healthy and brain healthy. Again, I've covered many of these studies. However, there is one emerging concern related to omega-3 fats and is especially applicable to my dad. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of omega-3s. There's so obviously some contraindications that have come out from like atrial fibrillation, uh, some heart issues, heart rhythm issues. Have you been concerned by that? Because do you want to talk about that? I mean, I watched your video on that and it didn't seem to apply to me, so. Um, I mean, I do have um, an arrhythmia and I mean, I haven't, I mean, it's been good actually, it kind of comes and goes, but it's been good for the last couple of years, so um, I don't, couldn't say that this is making it worse. Yeah, so the omega-3 dose matters a lot, so the dose that you're consuming is I haven't seen any evidence that that leads to any sort of heart issues from an arrhythmia standpoint. And to be clear, while it is true that some studies indicate that higher doses, say double, triple the dose that you're consuming, uh, increase arrhythmia uh, and atrial fibrillation, which is an arrhythmia, um, the overall effect, so when you look beyond the atrial fibrillation, you actually look at the outcomes, the actual heart disease and uh, heart attacks, stroke, all that stuff, um, it either has a neutral effect or still a benefit. So, I mean, you have a funky heart rhythm, that's scary for sure, I wouldn't want it, um, but the end result still indicates a benefit. So it's kind of a weird way to get there, but at least, the end result isn't, oh, but, and there's also an increase in a particular outcome. I think that the, the one potential is that with atrial fibrillation, one of the risks is stroke because you get this uh, clotting that occurs in, uh, in the top uh, section of your heart in a very general sense. And that allows for clots uh, to in, in embed themselves in the finer vessels of, of your brain. Um, but we don't see any evidence of that. So. Uh, whatever problems there might be, the outcome is still a benefit. So, uh, yeah, I'm, and again, at those doses, I haven't seen any evidence of any of that. So it's not really a concern. I've covered these data in the past as well. And as mentioned, this tends to be a bigger issue as the data suggests, although I'd like to see more at higher doses, like three grams. And the final two, glucosamine, sulfate, and curcumin. There's a lot to say here too. However, in this case, although I have covered curcumin's role in blood sugar regulation as well as on arthritis, the main reason my dad takes it is for the joint and anti-inflammatory benefits, even independent of arthritis. The evidence on a glucosamine is a bit more mixed and offers some more mild relief, but the evidence on curcumin for these outcomes has been more significant, at least in my mind. Again, I'll link my work on them for a deeper dive. The dose used for both is around 1500 milligrams, but there are some formulations where much less is needed. I cover that in my more targeted analyses, as well as for the Physionic Insiders work that I've done. Okay, one more thing my dad noticed about timing his powdered supplement stack that might benefit you, especially if you have sleep issues. Of course, this is just one man's experience, not a controlled trial, so bear that in mind. Yeah, okay, so, uh, tell me why you switched. Because at one point you were taking this. So tell me about you, how you were taking it before and then tell me how you were taking it now. Because you did recently switch it. Right, so this mixture um, with the creatine I was taking um, after lunch and finding that I was just often totally wiped out after lunch. Like I needed a nap and um thought maybe it had something to do with this and since i have problems sleeping um at night i thought maybe well maybe take it before going to bed and maybe that'll help me sleep at night and eliminate some of the um, afternoon slump too and um so now i'm taking it in the evening i haven't done this very long maybe a few weeks a month um, and it seems to be helping. It definitely helps um, we fall asleep.
My dad's had issues sleeping for a long time and over the last month or so, he's changed nothing but the timing of when he consumes the powder blend that he has. And it's led to a noticeable improvement in sleep. There are some mixed quality studies suggesting that glycine improves sleep. So if you have trouble sleeping, consider trying it. Okay, so I said this in my video on my supplement routine, which is quite different, that the supplements that you choose should be tailored to your goals and circumstances. This supplement routine of glycine plus N-acetylcysteine, creatine, collagen, taurine, lutein, and zeaxanthin, a multivitamin, glucosamine, omega-3s, and curcumin may not be right for you. In fact, if you're under 60, it's highly likely not right for you. I actually explain what I take right here Thanks for hanging out and check out my study analyses on each in the description. I'll see ya.